The redesigned M2 MacBook Air is going to be amazing, but with that said, is it worth waiting for it, or should you just buy the current M1 MacBook Air? This is the machine that is the closest to a perfect laptop ever made, and I'll answer it up front. No, I don't think you should wait for multiple reasons, and today we'll get into everything that we know about this new MacBook that's gonna be coming out, and we do know quite a lot from leaked schematics, certain specs, ports, performance that was released from TSMC for the upcoming fab and these new chips, and I'll give you guys all of the info to help you make the correct choice. Let's start out with the design. The M1 MacBook Air has the iconic wedge shape that has been so popular for such a long time. Now, this machine actually isn't that thin, especially on this thicker portion. It's actually thicker than the 13-inch MacBook Pro, but then because it goes nice and thin and wedges to this tiny edge here, it just makes it seem like such a thin machine, especially when you put it side by side with the new 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pros. Now the new M2 MacBook Air or MacBook, that one is going to be ditching this design. And to be honest, I'm quite sad about it. We have leak schematics, CAD files, we have lots of renders, and it's gonna go to a square flat slab design, just like Apple's new iPhones, the iPads, and pretty much everything that Apple is putting out, the Apple Watch that's gonna be coming out. So this MacBook is definitely gonna take that shape. And if we look at the renders that we have right now, it is extremely thin. The USB Type-C port is basically the full width or thickness of the side compared to the current MacBook Air where we have quite a bit of extra aluminum on the top and bottom but not only that it's actually a lot thicker because it's hidden with this little curve so that MacBook is gonna be much much thinner. We also know that the screen size is going to be the same. It will not be moving up to a 14 inch size, but instead the bezels are going to shrink. And that means that the actual footprint of the new MacBook is going to shrink. So overall, it will be a smaller machine and it will likely be lighter as well. So that will be another benefit. Now, even though I'm going to miss this wedge shape, one huge benefit is it increases the internal uh, area available for batteries and other components. So just like with the new 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pros, because of the slab design without any tapers, they were able to increase the battery size and give it better speakers as well. So the battery, it could stay exactly the same or they could still make the battery a little bit smaller thanks to improved efficiency and performance, which we'll talk about in just a bit. But I also expect the speakers to be quite a bit better. We do expect it to get MagSafe and I think that is a huge deal, not only because you can you know, prevent falls because it automatically disconnects and have that little LED to tell you if it's charging, but also because that will remove one of the ports being used for charging. So essentially, instead of having just two Thunderbolt ports on this MacBook Air, the new one will have two extras on top of charging. So you kind of gain an extra port, which is really nice. Now, personally, with the current MacBook Air, there are times where I am charging, and then at the same time, uh, I wanna plug in a few things, and I just can't. I have to wait, then unplug it. So it's not very often that happens, but that is definitely a benefit. Finishing off the design, we have to talk about the biggest change, and that is going to be colors. This is pretty much confirmed that we are gonna be ditching the black bezels on the MacBook Air and going to white bezels. Apple did that with the iMac. Uh, they're gonna doing that with the 27 inch iMac, the non iMac Pro model. And of course the MacBook Air is the most consumer friendly product. It is also going back to the white bezel design that they had a few, a few different generations back in the day. And then with that, we also are gonna get a white keyboard and that is really going to differentiate the new MacBook Air or the MacBook compared to the MacBook Pros where they're even added like a dark anodized aluminum underneath the keyboard. So they're adding even more contrast to those machines. Now we have to talk about that screen. Some renders have notches in them, some do not. I personally am not bugged by the notch too much, at least with the black MacBook Pros because they can be hidden easily. 
But with this new MacBook that's gonna be coming out, I hope that they do not include that notch, that realistically, that brings us to webcams. The reason that we have the notch with the 14 inch is because they put in an amazing 1080p webcam that looks much, much better than before, and they needed that extra space, and then maybe in the future also having Face ID. But with these MacBooks, um, if they do not add the notch, that means we're gonna get a weaker webcam, maybe still a 720p or just a 1080p one that is not as good, but I think that that is totally fine. I like the nice clean look without the notch. Now, as far as the screens themselves, we have a 400 nit brightness, high accuracy uh, screen LCD panel with the MacBook Air. It is good, but it is nowhere near the 1600 peak nit brightness of the mini LED XDR display. And that is what we are gonna be getting with the new MacBook Air. Now that alone might make it worth it for you to wait for the new MacBooks. That screen is gorgeous. The contrast is fantastic. Watching movies on it is great. And then if you work with HDR, which is not only for video now, but HDR photos, you do definitely want to have a screen like that. And that is also going to be raising the price, which we will also talk about after we're done with the performance. Now, as far as the ProMotion 120 Hertz, that is not going to be coming to this machine. At least that's what most people are saying. They're going to leave that for the MacBook Pros, just like the iPhone Pro models get, whereas the regular iPhone 13 or the mini, they stick with 60 Hertz, even though they both have OLED displays. And now on to performance. A lot of people are waiting for these machines because they want the M2 chip. The M1 chip, even though it is still amazing in terms of performance, more than powerful enough for almost everybody and smoking the older Intel Macs, well, that is kind of old news. People want something new and better and the new MacBooks are gonna get the M2 chip. TSMC already gave us the improvements of performance and efficiency. And so based off of that, we have some very clear numbers in terms of performance and there are actually a couple different options in terms of, uh, depending on how Apple does this. We had a couple scenarios we talked about before, and both scenarios have excellent performance. So as far as the CPU, we're gonna get at least 1900 single core score, which is gonna be amazing, even beating out the current 12th generation Intel Alder Lake, which has super fast performance, but of course needs a lot of power. Now that is if Apple runs the M2 chip based off of the A15, but in my opinion, with with what Apple is doing and when they're gonna be releasing this machine, there's also very possible that the M2 chip is gonna be based off of the A16 processor. In this case, our single core score will be over 2000, about 2057, and that is just jaw-dropping performance. And as far as multi-core, that will be 9,322. Now, as far as the chip layout, we're still expecting the same four performance cores and four efficiency cores. It makes a lot of sense in this kind of machine. Um, so that will be the same, but in terms of graphics, we are gonna jump up from the eight core configuration that's been down to seven cores, up to a 10 graphics core configuration that will be been down to nine for the entry level model. And as far as performance, if it's based off the A15, that still gives us a metal score of over 28,000, almost 29. And that is including thermal throttling because this machine is fanless. But if we're basing off of the A16, we are nearing 32,000 in terms of metal score. Now that is getting us close to the base 14 inch MacBook Pro, not all the way there. And of course, this thing also has a fan, but that is still insane performance. Now, I think that for most people that are buying a machine like this, they are not just trying to maximize the performance uh, because it's already really good. But on the flip side, we have efficiency. And TSMC already told us that it's gonna bring up to 22% better efficiency. And that means that the already excellent battery life of the M1 MacBook Air can be up to 22% better and have better performance or they can make the battery smaller. For example, the 12 inch Retina MacBook had a just over a 40 watt hour battery and it will still have the same excellent battery life. Now, I personally am leaning towards that smaller battery because we have info on the charger in the box being a 30 watt charger. So that's nothing like the chargers that come with the new 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pros. And in order for them to still charge the MacBook up fast enough, and we see the Apple's focusing on charging 50% in 30 minutes, then it will need to have a smaller battery to charge fast enough. So that is my opinion. Now, as far as release dates, I personally think that we might not even get 
an M2 MacBook Air or MacBook this year. You guys think about it just honestly. Would Apple be launching Pro machines still based on the M1 Pro chips, the M1 Max, putting out the Mac Pro, which is still gonna be based off of those chips, and at the same exact time saying, hey, we also have an M2 chip. I don't know, to me, it doesn't seem likely. We're still waiting for the iMac, the Mac Mini, iMac Pro, that Mac Pro, a lot of machines. I think it makes more sense to give it a little bit more time and wait till spring of 2023 to release this redesigned machine because they already have so many uh, different things coming out. And then if they push things back, which as you guys have seen, everything is getting delayed. Even the iPad was delayed by six months. Now we have Ola delayed, iMac Pro delayed. Um, there is just a lot of pushbacks because of parts shortages. So I would not expect it anytime soon, at least before fall or maybe even spring. And then with that, we also have the possibility of there not being an M2 MacBook Air. Now, we know this machine is coming, but the question is, will they call it the MacBook Air? Uh, they had the 12 inch retina MacBook before, they had the MacBook for everybody, which was just called MacBook as well. And I think if they're doing such a big redesign, new colors, new design, they could just call it the MacBook. And with that, we're gonna talk about price points because if this thing is coming with the mini LED display, the redesign, MagSafe, I think they are gonna be raising prices and this machine will not be replaced. So the MacBook Air will stay the same entry level for $900. $199 and this new MacBook will come out, in my opinion, for $1,300. We saw that Apple raise the prices on the MacBooks, Apple raised the prices on the 14 inch MacBook Pros, the 15 inch MacBook Pros, the iPad got a price re increase with the mini LED. So, when we have such a new machine that's redesigned after a while with all these improvements, I think it's going to fit in right there at the $1,299 price point. And that is probably the biggest reason why I think you should not wait. It's going to be a better machine but this works for almost everybody, and you can buy it as low as $850. We have links down in the description, and once this new one comes out, it still will be priced the same, meaning that you are gonna have to wait for a long time and spend more money. You gotta ask yourself the question, do you need to wait that long, or can you wait that long, or would you rather buy one of these, enjoy it, for nine months to a year, maybe a little bit longer, and then be able to resell it because the resale value on these machines are incredible. And then if that machine comes out and has all the things you need, you could upgrade at that point. I know a lot of people don't like waiting, but I think that makes a lot more sense than just always thinking about, well, what's the next big thing? Maybe I should wait for that. It's a con like a constant rat race waiting for that to come out. So there you guys go. We have the battery life, the design, the performance, all that info is already in front of our eyes. And hopefully that helps you make the correct decision decision, should you buy one of these amazing machines that's basically the best laptop, the most perfect laptop that has ever been made, or should you keep on waiting? Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Click that circle above to subscribe to help us reach 1 million subscribers. Check out one of those great videos right over there. This has been Max, and I'll see you in the next video.